All right, welcome to Blender Patreon, where pros become pros. No, where beginners become pros. Obviously, I'm still working on my video taping skills. I'm currently right now. We're downloading Blender. Um, we're going to experimental builds because the 2.8 is still in beta. So you click on the right um, system for you. In my case, 64-bit Linux. It's downloaded, and now I extract it. I'm extracting it to a file that I call programs. It has all my downloaded programs in it. So you extract it, and then you need to put it into your menu system. In my case, it's fairly easy. I just, here, wait a sec until it gets done here. Just click on the icon and edit application. And then I click on application, I go to the command, I browse to where the program is downloaded. In this case, the top one there. Click on that, and then click on the Blender program itself. Then I say OK, and it's finished. So now we start up Blender. Oh yes, Patreon. Don't forget to support me on Patreon. Um, I've chosen left click because all the other programs on my computer, all the art programs are left click. I've used right click on Blender for 15 years or more. And so I make false clicks all the time now because I'm not used to it. So now I'm setting up my startup file. I don't really like the way this version of Blender is starting up right now. So I subsurface the cube because that's how I want to start off in sculpt most of the cases. In other cases, I delete the cube and just start with something else. I'm also opening up all of these um, icon panels because if you open them far enough, you get words. And I'm new to Blender 2.8 and all the icons have been changed. So I need to be able to read the words. I really don't know why they don't just have this the default position. People can always close it down when they're advanced users and get rid of the words. And that gives you more space, more area to work in. As you can see, there's a box around the um, cube there that looks like a sphere. That's because I haven't applied subsurface. I actually forgot to do it. I'll come back and do that later in the video. So now I'm looking for preferences. It used to be in file, but now it's under edit. And in a second, I'll figure that out. Um, so I saved the startup file. Now I'm going to preferences. Um, I'm going to go through all of the preferences because uh, there's a lot of new preferences and new arrangements and whatnot. So we're going to start off in the interface. There's nothing I want to change in the interface. Pretty happy with it, but I'm just taking a look over all the different possibilities. So there's nothing there that I find interesting. Um, you can see that I've picked Science Lab. That's what's giving me this blue background instead of the gray background. I imported that from Blender 2.79b and did a few modifications. If you'd like to also use Science Lab, um, you can go to my Facebook page and I'll have a link there and you can download that and install it yourself. So in editing, there's nothing I really wanted to change. Just also taking a look around. Animation, again, nothing really interesting here. After that comes add-ons. Add-ons are really important. There are tons and tons of free add-ons included in Blender, but most of them are turned off by default. I'm going to go through each section. So in the 3D view, um, there's nothing here that I really want to turn on, so I'm going to go to the next thing. Um, curves, here you have extra curve objects, simplify curves, um, ivy generator and sapling generator. Those two plant generators can be really useful if you're making plants, but they're a tutorial in themselves. Um, these are all the different types of meshes. So instead of just having a cube and a few other shapes, you get all sorts of cool shapes like bolts and nuts and architectural forms. Very useful if you're building houses. The cameras, I want the camera rig because when I'm filming a movie, I want to be able to move the camera and the camera rigs help you do that. <coughs> So there's nothing in development that I'm worried about. Um, import, export the uh, import and export um, image as planes. This is a really, really useful feature. I highly recommend it. However, in um, 2.8, we now have uh, add node as background and add node as reference. Adding a node as reference and this import node as or image as plane are almost identical. 
So it's a little redundant. Um, node Wrangler, super important. It makes your life way, way easier when you're doing node work. It has tons and tons of hotkeys. And here's a list of them. That also warrants its own video. So then after nodes, objects, Boolean tools can be useful if you do a lot of Boolean work. I don't. Um, high menus is also very interesting. That noise in the background is my Degus. They're taking a run. So Pi Menus has a bug right now. If you press Control Spacebar, um, it pops up a Pi Menu, and it should actually be making the uh, screen full sized, which is very very useful. And I use it a lot. I want to see things in detail. Um, Rigify helps you rig things easily. And in Scenes, there's nothing. Sequential Editor, there's nothing. There used to be some good stuff there, but it'll probably come back. Just give it time. Um, text editor, nothing important. UV editor, some UV tools, helps you unwrap, makes your life easier in, in wrapping. Although 2.8 has improved unwrapping a lot, there's still a long ways to go in that, that field. So that's it for the, the UV tools. Um, an input emulate three uh, button mouse can be very useful for uh, Wacom tablets. Now, zoom to mouse position, I use that all the time. And orbit around selection is super important for me. You don't have to turn it on, but I love them. Um, auto depth, I'm not really sure how that works or what it adds. Um, key maps, nothing interesting here unless you want to change your key map. The system, undo, maximize that if you've got the memory in your computer. Um, also, did I miss it? Oh yeah, uh, sequencer cache limit. That's super important. It allows you to scrub through your video quickly. The default memory isn't enough. I have uh, 16 gigabytes on my computer, so I gave it 12 gigabytes. And the uh, save timer, I set down to one. This is beta software, it likes to crash, so I want my back up every, one, every minute. External imager um, or editor, image editor, I set to um, Krita. Krita is my main uh, external image editor. I find it a lot better than GIMP. Although GIMP does have some tools and some uses, I still use Krita 99% of the time. And Krita is getting stronger very quickly. And you don't have to put up with a bad uh, interface that you have with GIMP. So it took me a minute here to remember where uh, Linux saves Krita, but I found it quickly enough. You can see here I'm using the filter typing Krita and clicking to turn on the filter, and it narrows it down. So there's the program, it's clicked. Now all we have to do is save the preferences. Um, I think I set a temporary file folder here to my SSD drive, because I want the, when I'm, when I'm rendering a film, I want it to quickly access the hard drive and not be stuck with my giant three terabyte drive, which is slow, but big. So now I save the preferences. And you can see the cube has uh, that cube around it. This, it looks like a sphere, but it's a subsurface cube. Um, that's because I have not applied the subsurface modifier yet. And in a second here, I figure that out. I go over to the tools and I apply it. So now I'm going to save my preferences again. I'm going to go through and check to make sure I did everything right. And lo and behold, I didn't. So I've got to change a few things. Um, please, please support me on Patreon. As I say, buy me a beer. Um, I don't actually drink beer, but it sounds cool. So um, Patreon is the only way I get paid for this stuff. And I've chosen Patreon because I want to keep all my videos free. Because there are people in third world countries or really poor people who just love art. They love Blender. <clears throat> but they can't afford to pay for an add-on or a film or a tutorial, and I don't want to exclude them. However, even these guys can go and pay me $1 a year. I'm happy with that, or one whatever money type they have. You guys, like me, that are in a first world country, can naturally afford to pay a little bit more than $1 a year, and I appreciate that. It's really important. I'm really, really thankful for anything that anybody contributes. Also, once you contribute, then you have the possibility to get into all my private data. So everything's been saved, everything's updated. Thank you.